Jared, when, when did you learn about Val's suspension and what was your reaction? To I learned about it earlier today. Yeah. At like some time after pregame skate. I mean, obviously not happy about it, it, but it is what it is. It's out of our control. Right. As it relates to just dealing with that news shortly before a game, how do you have that conversation with the team, or can you really, and B, do you think that had an impact in terms of how you came out today, or do you think that had anything to do with it? No, I don't, I don't think we're, – like, we're not using that as an excuse. Like, we lose a good player in Val today. We add a good player in Drew Ann, you know, so um, – and he played well tonight, Drew, I thought. Like, for the amount of time he, he had off, I thought that he had good legs and played hard and – played well you know I think uh, like that that's not an excuse for our team for us like you guys kind of didn't well the energy didn't show up until the third period would it what you guys try to stay even keeled you've talked about when you're down was that the feeling in the room or we looked we looked we looked frozen in the first period like we were not moving, we were not skating. Looked like we were exhausted, and we should be the rested team, right? So I thought we got like better in the second, but it it was still a struggle. Like slow pace, slow thinking, lack of execution. Um, like I didn't feel like it wasn't the guys weren't like not trying, but it just everything felt like it was a struggle tonight. Eric. You obviously don't want to use the Val news as a as an excuse, but just given the circumstances of two years in a row showing up to the rink, finding out something like this, just how much can that deflate a team before a game like this, a big game? I, 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 I'm not. We're not going to use it as an excuse. I mean, it, it's, just, it's just we can't, it, and we won't because, again, it's we treat it just like OC. Injured, done for the year. You get news like that all the time. You continue to play with the players that you have, and we have the ability to play a heck of a lot better than we did today, regardless of any news. Like, I can't think of news that that, that you can't work through. You, we have, you have to be mentally tough. That, and that, I don't think – I honestly don't think that – I mean, I don't think it's an excuse. I don't. Sorry to belabor this, but we know there's a human element involved here that you look at as important also. Yeah. But how much did Val let down you and this team? Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to go there. I think, like, listen, Val obviously is struggling with something, right? I have two thoughts. Yeah, it sucks for our team. we got to turn the page. We got to go play way better than we did today. There's still 20 plus guys in that room that care and that want to win and and that are here, and that's what we have to focus on. It hurts our team. There's no question. He's a great player. And the second one is like I've gotten to know Val as a person, and I've gotten to know him as one of our teammates and a player, and I want what's best for him, and I want him to be happy, and I want him to be content in his life, whether that's with our team or not with our team. I want the best for him and his family. I think all of our guys are the same, and we hope that he can like find some peace and, and get help. And so that's the other side of it. Like it's not – Hockey's not life and death, although we treat it like it is. And so Val's a big priority, and our team's like another one. Now it's separated. They're not together. Like he's done for six months plus, whatever that whatever that looks like. And um, so, again, we treat it like an injured player that's not able to play for us, like OC or Landy. I mean, we got to worry about the guys that are on the ice and are able to play for us. Yeah. Hey Jared, how was the news delivered to your players? I mean, I mean, you said you found out after the morning skate, but yeah, I talked week. to him when yeah. when everyone got back to the rink. Yeah. Okay. So just before the game, basically. It was uh, well, guys are here early, so we did it as early as we can. They started getting some news in the afternoon. Like guys were gone from the rink, and some guys still trickling around. So some guys knew, and but. So that that's yeah, we did the best you can under the circumstances. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're uh, good. Can you describe what the 
mood was like in the room when you delivered that news to them? Well, I mean, I think the guys certainly are, are going to be disappointed. They know how valuable Val is to the team, but, you know, like we talked about in our meeting, like it's one player out and another really good player coming in. Like Drew's a heck of a hockey player. He's done a heck of a job for us all year long, and he did again tonight, you know. So that, that it's one lineup change. You know, you lose Taves before the game because of sickness and the, the – you know, it's some more bad news. So, um, obviously, big players for us. But, again, like, the guys that played tonight, us as a group, as a whole, like, we've got better than that. That was our worst game of the series. And, um, yeah, it like I said, it looked like it was, it was a struggle for our guys. It looked like we lacked energy. It looked like we were the really tired team and they were the fresh team. And, and, I, and you know, I don't have the answer for that. Wish I did. Right, but Kind of jumping back to the performance, I mean, it's another game where you fall behind. You're now down in the series 3-1. Are there things that you look at that you see is like maybe symptomatic of something larger? Is it just these are separate incidents where the same things keep happening and it's just kind of one giant coincidence, just except for you're now down 3-1 in a game away from elimination? Yeah, I can't, I can't group all the games together. That's just not my mentality. Like game one, we were bad out the gate. They took it to us. Um, and then game two... I thought we had a really good period. We had a couple of really good chances. They had a couple of really good chances. Game one, they happened to score on three of their first five chances. You know, we scored on, you know, four later in the game. Um, so, like scoring first, I think it's important in this series. Like, if I could just tell them, hey, you got to have a good start and score first. It's not that easy. Um, so, we battle back in game one. Game two, I. I, I liked our, our first period and, and we fall down one nothing, you know. Our second period was trouble. Game three at home, I thought we were dominant in the first period. Thought it, that's what I thought seeing the eye test. That's what I thought after watching the video. We had like a lot of chances in the first. We have three power plays. It was a little stale and we don't we don't score, right? So we end up getting scored on later on and, and we're down again. Tonight we were atrocious. You know, so it's two out of four bad starts, two out of four good starts, but we didn't capitalize at some key times, and it's been a struggle for us here a little bit. Last two, Rod and then Eric. Coming off what you just said, calling this game atrocious, you said it was the worst of the series. How do you – where's the confidence level going into, obviously, a game you have to have, and how do you get that confidence level up with these guys? Yeah, so, well – I thought we did a good job as a team and after talking to the guys, they were down after the last game and, and um, every guy takes a different length of time to be able to turn the page, right? Everyone has their own process they go through, coaches, players, trainers, everybody involved. Um, but I felt like we were in a good spot today at morning skating, ready to go. Um, you know? Shows you how much I know, I guess, because you know, it wasn't very good. And then, uh, so, I mean, you got to reset and do it again. You have no choice. I mean, it doesn't matter how you get to this point. Um, you got you got to fight. You know, that's what you have to do. If you look at the Carolina game, like they play, they, like I consider the first three games all very close games, right? They're one goal games with empty nets. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you get blown out or you lose by one, it's still a loss, right? And Carolina and the Rangers go in, and that's 3-1 today, and Carolina bounces back with the, their best game of the series, and they get a result. Now the pressure is going to be on New York, and that's the way I look at this. Like we got to go in and, and play a really good hockey game, and we got to get a result. And, and then, you know, comes back here, pressure can swing a little bit, you know? Like the the – but like we didn't do a very good job handling that pressure today for whatever reason, and we'll dig into it tomorrow, but I don't know the answer just yet. You said a little bit ago that right now Val and the team are separate. In this moment, can you see a scenario in the future where those two things are together? I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank yep, you. Thank you.